Hi everybody, I am Emmanuel Giner, one of the main content package developers and what we are going to see in this video is how to run your first near full CI calculation using the stochastic CFC algorithm implemented in the quantum package. So it won't take much time, just about a cup of coffee more or less. And so uh, let's go for it. So what we are going to see essentially in this video is related to our documentation here. And if you go to quick start guide here, you have a demo, okay, of how to do uh, a near full CI calculation here. So this is essentially what we are going to do today. So the first thing that you need to do is to run your BNQPSH shell script here, okay, which is lo located at the root of your quantum package. Once that you have done that, you have this nice lo logo of QPSH that tells you that you are in the quantum package shell and then that you have the auto completion for all the quantum package command. So then you go somewhere in your file system here and then I have an XYZ file okay, of my HCN molecule okay, and from that we are going to run a near full CI calculation uh, on that HCN molecule in the 631G uh, basis set. So in a previous video I explained to you how to run a hard refer calculation in pretty much details um, and also how to what is an SVO database and these kind of things. So I will go uh, a small repass on the on this uh, on these aspects. So let's go. First thing that you do is that you create an SVO database, okay, from this HCN uh, molecule. So you choose the basis set six. So you see here I have all the auto completion that appears because I have my I am in my QPSH uh, shell script. So let's go for 631G and then uh, the name of the XYZ file. Once that you have done that, you see that here you have this little cat that, that appears here, okay? That tells you that you have an SVO database named hcn.svo, which has been created. And this is on that database that we are going to work. So that database, hcn.svo, contains basically everything uh, you need for a quantum chemistry calculation, uh, which is here an AO basis with a lot of things, the number of electrons, and also the nuclear geometry. Okay. Anyway, so what do we need for our full CI calculation? First, we need to specify a set of orthogonal um, molecular orbitals, okay? So the MO basis, so by default we'll do a hard to fuck calculation to have that. Then what we need to do is also to specify uh, if we want to have a frozen core full CI or not. And of course, as we are using a 631G basis set, which does not contain any functions uh, for the core correlation or core valence correlation, we are just going to do frozen core full CI. So first thing first, the hard to fuck calculation. So in our hcn.svo, there is no such a thing as a MO basis, okay? Because if I go tab, nothing shows up. So, okay, so of course, it's because of course we didn't run a hard to fuck calculation. So this is what we are going to do. So once more, if you want to run a program, you, you go QP run, okay? Which means that you are going to run an executable on the SVO database that is here. Okay, and then you tab tab and uh, you pick up a program that you like, for example, the SCF program, and then you put the output somewhere in your file, for example, hcn.svo.scf.out. Okay, let's go here. You have the SCF running, and now, of course, if I go hcn.svo, here I have an MO basis. Fine. Now let's go for the full CI. So we like to freeze the two 1s orbital, one of the carbon, one of the nitrogen, and these orbitals might be easily identified by the fact that they have a very, very low, uh, of course, um, Fock energy. So if you go to this SCO, the 
so the output of the SCF program you see at the end you have the eigenvalues of the fuck operator and what you clearly see is that you have here the two first orbital okay as they are ordered in uh, I mean by energy of course the two first orbital are the one uh, which we are interested in because they have clearly a very low eigenvalue so uh, to freeze this orbital is very easy you have a tool for that okay so you go QP then tab tab and you have you see here you have set frozen core okay so frozen core like that and if you do so here you clearly see that you have in the core you have the first and second orbitals and then active you are from this f from the third orbital to this very end so here you have 20 molecular orbitals so once that we have done that we have correctly set uh, so the the active space for the frozen core full CI calculation so to run the full CI calculation we are going to use the CPC algorithm okay so to run a the program in general you go QP run then you tab to select the program you want and here you see that you have the full CI okay so full CI and then by default I mean by definition if there is this little cat uh, in green with with the name of the SPO database it means that it is going to run on the SPO database and then what you do is that you put the output somewhere in a file like that and then it uh, it goes as it's going a little bit fast uh, we are going maybe to uh, to open a new window here okay like that enlarge it you run your quantum package shell then you come back to QP example where we were before and then you see that you have this hcn.svo.fci.out uh, which is the output of the program so the output of the program is quite verbose okay so it tells you so here you have the date then you it tells you of course that you're running a quantum package you have here the the status of uh, I mean the git status of the program that you are using so it can be also useful if you have some bug report uh, you can maybe check uh, then uh, you have uh, the SVO directory on which you are running okay here the scn.svo and then you have a lot of things okay for example it tells you that it is so you have the geometry it tells you that it is computing the the AO integrals, so the B electronic integrals, then it's doing the AO to MO integral transformation, and so on and so on. And then it really starts the CPC algorithm, okay, because here you see that you have some energy, here some PT2, okay, and maybe in order to get things a little bit clearer, what we are going to do is to look for the documentation where everything is maybe uh, much clearer. So, in order to make things a little bit clearer, if you go to uh, the quantum package website, here you have the read the documentation that opens really the documentation web page, and you have the selected configuration interaction, which is essentially the CFC algorithm uh, that we have. So, <coughs> the CFC algorithm is very simple because essentially what you have is that you are going to iteratively enlarge a wave function by selecting the most important slates at the time and uh, thanks to perturbation theory so you start with a, at, a, at a given iteration n here maybe let's enlarge this a little bit so at a given iteration n you have a, a given uh, wave function okay which is a linear combination of slate determinant uh, which are the internal slate determinant and then what you're going to do is that uh, you're going to look for all the external uh, slate determinant that we call here alpha so alpha they don't belong to this uh, to this wave function okay here and what you're going to do is to compute uh, the second order perturbative correction uh, 
for the energy for that alpha. So essentially what you do is that you are applying perturbation theory, so that's standard uh, Rayleigh Schrodinger perturbation theory for that alpha in order to estimate uh, if I mean how important this alpha is for the energy. Okay. You can also choose another criterion but uh, that's essentially um, I mean the the most relevant. And then the idea is that uh, once that you have done that for all the alpha, you can estimate a PT2 correction. Okay, so this is why you have uh, the, the PT2 correction uh, in, in the output. And you know that the total uh, correction to the energy in perturbation is just the sum of uh, all the alpha here. Uh, so here uh, you sum over all the alpha. Uh, the contribution of each alpha and you have an estimation of the full CI energy which is the energy okay, of your wave function plus the total contribution of the alpha to the energy. Okay. So this gives you an estimation of the full CI energy. And then what you can do is that while you're computing uh, the alpha what you can do is that you can take the the subset of alpha with the largest contribution okay uh, to the energy okay and then this is the way you select the most important slate determinant and so you enlarge so at the next iteration so n plus one what you will have is that you will have the set of slater determinant that you already have okay so essentially that set of uh, of slater determinant okay plus okay the the new set of external slater determinant with the largest uh, contribution okay to the energy and then what you do is that you come back here and then you have a new wave function so you re-diagonalize your hamiltonian within that set of slater determinant and then you reselect uh, the new slater determinant you recompute the pt2 and so on and so on and so on so uh, you have a stochastic version of it so i'm not going to enter into details but that's essentially what is doing uh, this um, cpc algorithm so now that we understand a little bit more of cpc let's come back to uh, the output of our full ci calculation here so for example here you see that you have selected nine slates at the time it ends okay and that you have so this is the expectation value of s squared so you have a singlet of course because this is what we wanted and this is for example the variational energy okay of the wave function that you have with nine slate at the time okay then you compute the pt2 correction here like that that's the var that's the value of the pt2 correction and then you have this which is the uh, value of the variational energy plus the second order perturbative correction um, with a wave function of nine slate at the end. And then what you do is that you enlarge the wave function. So here you have now s selected nine more slate at the end. So you have another energy, you have another PT2, then you have another E plus PT2, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, so in order to make ma maybe things a little bit clearer, what you can do is that you can use a tool which is called, so you, so you go QP, tab, tab, and then you see that you have QP e full CI, which is a tool that allows to, um, let, let's say, to, to plot uh, the convergence of the energy. So you QP e full CI, then you put the name of the SVO database here and that you see that either as an output you have this so if I go here I see that I have here for example that so that's really the convergence of the variational and the variational plus perturbation theory uh, energies okay as a function of the number of slates at the time here and this uh, you have also the dot plt which is a GNU plot file and uh, this GNU plot file has generated uh, so this PDF file which represents here 
the convergence of the variational energy as a function of the number of slater determinants. So you see that, so we had nine slater determinants, so you have this variational energy, you have this um, PT2 correction, which is the difference between this and that, and that's the estimation of the full CI energy. Then you go to 18 slater determinants, you have another energy, so of course, as you enlarge the, the wave function, you go lower in energy because of the variational principle and then you have another estimation of the full CIA energy thanks to the PT2 and then you keep on doing that. So here just mark the log scale for the number of slighter determinants and what is quite striking is that of course the variational energy converges quite fast but more importantly the total uh, estimation of the full CIA energy so the variational plus the PT2 okay converge much faster and essentially within a bunch of hundreds later determinant maybe a thousand you have essentially converged uh, the uh, the energy with a sub milliharchy precision okay so for example if we come back here you see that for example uh, the difference between uh, the e plus pt2 so the estimation of the of the full ca energy okay uh, between 600 here slater determinant and uh, basically the end it the, so the deviation is less than one millihertz okay so said that okay uh, we can say that we have converged our full CI calculation okay so just a few words to end up this video uh, to summarize a little bit all that so you need to enter in the QPSH mode okay for the auto completion but that's something that you need to do anytime you run quantum package so that's uh, that's this script okay which is l located somewhere at your QP root bin QPSH okay yeah. then you have to create an SVO database from your XYZ file okay which contains the uh, molecular geometry and so you go QP create SVO the name of the base itself here we chose 631G uh, by the way you use the auto completion with tab much easier and then the name of your XYZ file and as an output it has created an SVO database which is here hcn.svo then what you need to have is of course molecular orbital so we chose to run hard to fuck calculation okay so you go QP run a CF then it creates an output file which is quite <coughs> quite verbose and then that's uh, but the, the important output is that it has created an MO basis within the SPO database then you freeze the 1s orbitals of the SPO because you want to do a frozen core full CI so it goes with QP set frozen core and then you run the full CI okay with QP run full CI then it creates a verbose file okay that you can put somewhere and uh, you can check the convergence uh, in that verbose file but you can also use uh, this QPE conv okay to check the convergence of, of the energy okay which is quite nice and as an output it creates uh, a file with where you have as a function of the number of slater determinants in plain text so that's very easy to look at uh, the convergence okay of uh, of the energy both rational and plus perturbation and it also creates a PDF okay which looks like something like that where you have the convergence as a function of the number of slater determinants of in, in purple the variational e energy and in green and uh, the um, E plus PT2 so the approximation of the full CI calculation uh, so this file here uh, will be available in plain text in the description of the YouTube video so in such a way you can just copy and paste uh, with, uh, with your mouse and I hope that this video wasn't too boring that you now uh, know how to run your first a near full CI calculation with the quantum package. So see you later. Ciao.